All right, guys, welcome back. In the last video, I showed you how to connect to MySQL database via the uh, database cloud functions that I have created for you guys. In this video, I wanted to show you how you can do it with the class as well. And this class I have created just for you for this training video. And this will help you not only just for connecting to one database, but all different kinds of database. So for example, with this one class, you can connect to 10 different databases within your PHP code. So let me show you what I mean. So I will hop on over to my MySQL localhost uh, admin, PHP my admin. So I have a whole bunch of different databases that I'm in here. So for example, if I wanted to connect to my Node.js database, with the function class, I would have to create another file called Node.js. If I wanted to connect to, let's say, uh, my login system, I will have to copy that particular file and then change the database setting. And then I will have two different files that I have to include because the functions are the same, which I personally think is repetitive and to be quite honest, it's ridiculous. In coding, if you are a developer, you wanted to create something once and reuse it gazillion times without actually have to copy and paste over and over and over again. So to alleviate that problem, I created this database class for you. So let's look at that. Let me bring up my sublime text editor and let me just kind of shrink this up so you guys can see it. And let's go all the way up. So this database class is called simple DB class. The name itself is will tell you everything you need to know. So let's walk through this thing. The first thing you need to actually pay attention to or know is called this particular variable is called show query error messages. You can set it to on or you can set it to off. That's all it does. If you wanted to troubleshoot your programming as you are building your web applications or whatever to see everything is working fine, you could turn it on. And then when you're done, you feel like you have gotten all the error messages out or whatnot. You can just set this to off. And that's that. And then there are a bunch of, uh, pretty much there are like, I think six or seven functions in here, but most important one is the, the one in here by default, I have it set to connect to local host and the root user is root and the password is just blank and the database name is blank. And I will go in more detail as we go through this process. I just wanna show you what the functions are. So we have construct function, which will take care of, of connecting to the database. And then we have five different uh, queries that you can use within this class. For the most part, I come from a relational database uh, world. So for me, if I wanna get something, I use a process called select query. And then if I wanna insert something, hence insert it, update, delete, all four of those methods are available uh, for your database. However, I did create an additional query. I just called it general purpose. So for example, if you just want to run this, let's say uh, select all from table user and then that's that. And then you just quickly want to run that to make sure that table exists or something like that. You could do that with this query. And when it's done, it's going to give you a result of zero or one. That's all. So let's walk through this select query function. So in here, what it will do is if it ran, you can call it like this. You can call it select and whatever you want to put in here. So in this case, I have it as a select all, all the fields within the table. And then the table name is user where site name is code with mark. And it will show you all the records with this criteria and put it in a nice and row for you and then you can do whatever you want with it and then next function is insert so you call it like this you call the function called insert and whatever table name that you want to uh, insert the data into it and then insert 
array and this is an example of what it is so you say user uh, id name blah and then whatever the value it is in here and then you know different fields that you want to put it in there you put in the values in here that's that and let's go on to the next function and in here you can update it the table actually before i go any further so in this particular insert function if it ran successfully what it's going to do is depending on if you have in your table auto increment uh, record ID it will give you the whatever the record ID was inserted and not to worry we will go through each one of these function thoroughly so let's go down to the next one which is the update and you can call this function like this update whatever it takes three different parameters one is the table name and another one is array of field whatever fields that you want to update and then also it takes where the where clause. So in other words, if you want to say, I want to update user name to be COVID mark, where site name is X, Y, and Z. So within that parameter, it will say, hey, okay. And then you can also add multiple different fields. Like for example, in here, it gives you an example, like a red field. It could say field one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and it's going to update all those fields with whatever the value in it. I will recommend before you update or insert anything in your database, uh, run through this particular function in your uh, PHP code, and I will show you how to do that. Only what this will do is this particular function will allow you to uh, prevent SQL injection. So it is highly recommend that you do it that way because that way your database will not get corrupted or anything in that nature. And then in the where section, you can say you can add multiple different where clauses or uh, fields of where you can say record ID equal to record date equal whatever the date might be. And then it will update accordingly there. And once it's done, if it ran successfully, it's going to give you a result as one otherwise it's going to give you zero and if you have the show query uh, error messages on it's going to give you if it couldn't run it it's going to give you that particular error message Just, this will come in handy when you are troubleshooting your code and then we have delete where you can delete it say we can call it like this so whatever table name it takes three parameters the table name the field name and what of the value that is equal to so in this case what i'm saying is go to the users table where the user id equals code with mark anything with that particular criteria delete all the records so that's what this is going to do and then we have the query purpose uh, query function like i say this is just general purpose query you can do this with whatever if you know your code like you just want to say I, I don't want to use any of the query so you could just come in here and say i want to select all if it whatever criteria do you have if it shows up that record and then you could do your further uh programming if you wanted to or if you just want to use this query to just say select uh, insert row equal blah 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 whatever you could use the insert statement in here you can also use the lead statement you can also use update statement all in one so this is for your all general purpose if this particular query ran successfully it's going to return the value of one otherwise it's going to return the value of zero if you have your query errors on it's going to give you whatever the error message it if it didn't run for whatever reason all right and last but not least we have two different functions and this one is the clean database data so like I said before, it's going to allow you to prevent any SQL injections. So before you insert anything from your user, I will always highly, 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 I cannot emphasize, highly recommend run all your data through here in case there was some sort of a funky thing going on with the user because you they're possibly trying to mess with your web applications or whatnot. So just run it through here and you'll be good. And last function 
is uh, clear HTML data. So in other words, if you don't want to allow your users to insert any HTML code whatsoever, you could just run it through here and it's going to strip out all the HTML tags and then only give you straight up text. All right. Now that we have this great background, let's go and learn how to use this bad boy. So in here, the name of the class is, if I go all the way up, the name of the class is this. So I'm going to go in here and I'll just say, I'll just create a variable called DB and I'll call it new. And in here it takes about one, two, three, four parameters. So I'm going to copy all this. And this will, I will show you how powerful this particular thing is. So in here, I have localhost as my host. So I'm going to leave that alone. And my user, I'll just say, leave it as a, a regular root user, password. I don't want to be anything. And for my database name, this is where it's going to get really interesting. So I'm going to go into my database. So let's say I want to connect to this particular database first, right? So I'll just put this on the side for now. And then I'll put the database name here. And you know what? Just for the hell of it, I'll just call it Node.js database or something. Node.js. Just to keep things simplified. So now in here, there is a table called users. And it has nine records within this table. So let's look at that. So here are the nine records that are in here. Okay, so let's select all these nine records and show them. So one way to do this is I could just say, uh, let's just copy this and call it Q equal this. And this is the syntax. So what this is going to do is it's going to take this, select this database, and then you could use the select function and say select all from users. And like I said before, if it ran successfully, it's gonna give you return value of one or more for this particular thing. If it didn't run successfully, it's gonna, it's gonna say zero. So what I wanted to do is this. I wanna copy this and say, if q is less than one so in other words it's going to be zero then i'm going to say echo out no data found with the sad face however if else if q is greater than zero which means there are rows then i wanted to echo out the, I want to dump out the values. So I'm going to use var dump. That is a function within the PHP. So I'm going to just dump out the V and that's that. All right, so let's try this bad boy out in the function. I already have the file open and this is, I was just testing it out, but I'll just refresh the same file. And then it's going to say, is the parsing error? Let's check this out. So in line seven, Let's see, why is it giving us a parsing error? Okay, the reason why it was giving us a syntax error, as you'll see right here, I forgot to add a semicolon here. It's really simple. And then let's rerun this particular thing. Fingers crossed, hopefully we'll see results. And now it cannot connect to Node.js. See what's going on there. Okay, the reason why uh, we are getting this cannot connect to it because if I go over to my connection setting here, I have a space. So just make sure that there, when you type in your database, there are no spaces or anything like that. Otherwise, this will not work. So let's save this and we should get results now all right here we go awesome so we have results and let's just say there are no error messages so we got all the results in here 
and if we want to count how many results there are so I'm going to go in here then I'm going to say there's a function called let's just echo it out say total rows or something like that and then I'll call it there's a function in PHP is called count and then I could say Q and then I'll just put like a couple of line break breaks just to be clear cleaner I guess all right so let's do this so we have nine rows that are got from the database so let's see how many rows do we have we have nine rows so there you go it's really simple and this is what I want to show you again so we have one database that we connected to so let's copy this line of code and then what I wanted to do is I wanted to connect to my uh, login system database actually that won't be a good I uh, example because there's nothing in here so we're gonna get nothing back so it's not really a good example so let's try another one uh, let's try the motivation code database so let's I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna go here and just replace it with here and just to keep it things simplify and remember I did not copy this class at all all I did was just change these settings here to say connect to this database so basically while this is still valid all i'm going to do is i'm going to replace this with this so now rather than saying hey connect to node.js database i'm going to say connect to motivational database and then from here there's a table called code quotes and then i'm going to say hey go in there and then just tail, change the table name without doing anything. I'm going to save this and then I'm going to come back in here. Right now, remember this was giving us from the Node.js database. Now I'm going to connect it to the motivational database. So let's see if this works. And now we have 336 rows. Just to confirm it, if we go back in here, under the database we have 360 30, 360 rows so as you can see with just one line of code you can definitely change your database without having to go and recopying the connection settings so overall so let me put things in perspective for you so let's say you have one database that you are connecting to which has your I don't know all the users and then another database you have uh, all your IP addresses or something like that so what you can do is you can go to your user database under user table and say hey grab me all the users with this particular IP address so all the IP addresses and users and then with another line of code you can say hey now go to the IP address database and take all the IPs that are in users and give me the location information. This is just an example. What you also could do is you can connect to 20, 30 different databases and extract data from it. And then you could do further manipulation of your uh, queries. And I'm going to stop right here. But if you need further uh uh, documentation on how to use this I'm gonna put the link in the description and also you can download this class to the github uh, repository I will also put a link in the description for you to download it so I think this video is pretty long enough I already beat you enough with it to how powerful this particular simple DB class uh, function classes for connecting to your database not just one database but multiple databases so without any further ado i will see you guys in the next video